the pick is in for the Miami Dolphins. And with the 21st overall selection, the Miami Dolphins did select Chop Robinson, the pass rusher from Penn State. Who he is, how the board fell, what they're saying, all of that here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked on Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked on Dolphins, co-host of Locked on NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of the cap to our every dares because it is your team every day here on the Locked on Network. We don't just say it. We live it. Today's episode of Locked on Dolphins is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. That is LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Now, I, I hope everybody tuned in for the live stream. It was on Locked on Dolphins. It was on Locked on NFL Scouting. Um, Joe Marino, I went wire to wire in the first round. We're doing the same thing again tomorrow night. And uh, it was a chance to kind of react to all the picks that they're happening, including the knee-jerk reaction uh, to the Chop Robinson pick for the Dolphins. And everybody started apologizing to me. Kyle, I'm so sorry. You didn't have this guy graded particularly high. He had a second round grade on him. Yeah, well, I only had like 15 first round grades. And and what I would say, my immediate knee jerk reaction is to follow my own advice from Thursday, right? I got to get the full body of work. I need to see what this draft class looks like. Do I love this pick? No. I wouldn't say that I love this pick. Do I understand this pick? Yes, I do understand this pick. I, I think the real heartbreak came for me when Troy Fatano came off the board one spot in front of Miami. It would have been fascinating to see what Miami did there, although it did sound like at least, and you would expect this to be the case for any time you're doing an introductory press conference, the Dolphins uh, very emphatically uh, stating Chris Greer and, and Mike McDaniel, how enthusiastic they are in their collaborative process kind of had this as a guy that they were really dialed in on uh, based off of the way that the board fell. And uh, that is a, a fourth pass rusher for the Miami Dolphins and a guy who's super explosive a guy who has some production questions. We're going to get into the dreaded pressure versus sacks debate all over again. Like we didn't do this with Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of revisit some of the things that I said about Chop Robinson in the build up to the draft, because I think there's some thoughts that I had there with Chop Robinson uh, that I, I think uh, are important to reiterate because pe people's immediate reaction was like, Oh, Kyle doesn't, like this pick. I, I I like the pick. Do I love the pick? No. Am I as caught off guard as I was by the Cam Smith pack pick last year? Absolutely not. Because Cam Smith was at a position where they had already heavily invested. And yeah, Miami signed Shaq Barrett on a one-year deal. But um, I had Jared Verse being the pick. Now, Verse went at 19 to the Rams. So you don't expect, you, know, you, you can't hold it against him for a player that didn't make it to you. So that's Troy Fatanu. That is... Um, Jared Verse, it's Leatu Latu. Uh, the board didn't fall necessarily super favorably in that regard. And as the board fell, and I'm processing the players that were available at 21, and I'm talking with Joe Marino about it, I kind of came back to, man, if they, if they get any reasonable offers here, the, the, the board actually fell in spite of six quarterbacks going in the first 12 picks and no defensive players going in, in the first 14. The board still fell in a way where I'm looking at like my, my must haves other than Johnny Newton with the medical questions that he has. I didn't get those guys that I'm like, I can't trade out of this spot. And um, because of that, it, that, that list for a reminder was Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Joe Alt, Troy Fatanu, Byron Murphy, Jared Verse, Leatu Latu. Um, and Quinya Mitchell at corner, who went to pick after to Miami, where I understand why you didn't pick Quinya Mitchell, because again, it's you, you put the players in the tiers and you have the conversation of do we really need this? Uh, is this overkill? Is this a misappropriation of assets? Uh, and, and it's not like anybody would have felt really good about a corner in the first round anyway after Miami went uh, that route so frequently and, and adds Kendall Fuller and has Cam Smith on the back burner from last year. 
So I, I thought the board fell in a way that I, I would have favored a trade down. Uh, I know Peter Schrager from NFL Network did his mock draft, and he had the Dolphins picking Chop Robinson. And it wasn't that he had him trading down to 29, which Detroit ended up trading up to 24. So he got a Detroit trading up right, and he got Miami getting Chop Robinson right. But it was the way the board fell that I said, man, like they, they moved out of all these players. And none of those players that were like my non negotiable don't trade down players made it to 21. Uh, were there players that I had more highly rated that were still available on the board? Yeah, there were some wide receivers, wide receivers that ended up going in the first round and Xavier Leggett and Ricky Pearsall. I was told Ricky Pearsall was just some well, wide receiver three just because he ran routes and wasn't athletic in the YouTube comments. But I don't, I don't know. He went 31 in San Francisco. I'm sure he's going to do just fine. But uh, Graham Barton stood out as probably, you know, if you look past the second, uh, Graham Barton was from a positional value. Uh, and that was an interior player for them. So I, I kind of get why the waterfall cascaded them down into this conversation. And I think there was a big drop off, uh, with, with obviously Darius Robinson was there. He went later to Arizona. I get why this pick was made and I get what the, the long-term vision is for this player. And that was what I said when we did the flip the table episode, I said, I wouldn't flip the table for chop Robinson. Would I be a little underwhelmed with that being, the presumed face of your draft class who's going to come in uh, if your expectation is this player is going to play meaningful snaps for you. Yeah, I'd be a little underwhelmed. And I do feel a little underwhelmed that that you stayed and picked at 21. And Chop Robinson is a player who he himself in the the uh, the introductory press conference, which I thought was interesting, and uh, both Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel and the their post-night one press conference talked about the areas of growth for him as a player. Uh, I think there's some other things that were said that is interesting, and that's kind of what we're going to get into next year on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. So stick with us. We're reacting to Chop Robinson, the explosive pass rusher from Penn State. Some production questions. We'll get into a little bit of that up next in addition to what they're saying here on Locked on Dolphins. If you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role, and that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn is help, designed to help you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users are not looking on other job boards. So if you're not checking LinkedIn, you're not looking in the right place. LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 86% again of small businesses get a qualified candidate. Two and a half million small businesses rely on LinkedIn for their hiring. So why don't you? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. This episode of your favorite Locked On podcast is brought to you by the best meal kit service in the game, Home Chef. No more having to answer the dreaded question, what are we going to do for dinner tonight? Thanks to Home Chef and their chef design recipes that are delivered directly to my door, all pre-packaged, pre-portioned. They even peel the garlic cloves for you. And each recipe, one of my favorites, black and mahi mahi, comes with a full page of easy to read instructions that include customization options and pictures to guide you along the way through the step-by-step -step process. So you don't have to ask, is that what Charles looks like. I cannot recommend Home Chef enough, especially right now, because for a limited time, Home Chef is giving Locked On listeners 18 free meals, free dessert for life, and of course, free shipping on your first box. If you head to homechef.com slash locked on today, that's homechef.com slash locked on for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Yes, you heard that right. Homechef.com slash locked on must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. So Chop Robinson's our, our first round selection, uh, the first of the Mike McDaniel era, a pass rusher. Mike wasn't kidding when he said he'd have a hard time not picking a defensive lineman with a first round pick uh, with what they bring to the table. So here's a little bit of a brush up on Chop Robinson and the profile that he has. Uh, Chop Robinson, the past two seasons at Penn State, has played a grand total of 758 
defensive snaps across two seasons. Uh, across those two seasons, uh, this is a player who has logged um, an impressive pass rush win rate. His pass, pass rush win rate was almost 21% tracked this past season, uh, but played in 10 games, 303 defensive snaps, almost a 50-50 split on uh, rushing the passer and run defense. Uh, the pass rush profile is off the charts, even though the sacks are not. Uh, from a pass rush win rate and pressure rate standpoint, this is uh, one of the more potent players. You want to see what he's capable of. Watch what he did to the Michigan right tackle. You can watch the Iowa game. You can watch the Rutgers game. Those are the games that really stood out to me and showcase the things that he does well. I thought the Ohio State game was the other side of the coin. Uh, if you want to uh, get the full spectrum uh, of Chop Robinson as a player, the athletic profile here, uh, explosiveness is the name of the game. Six foot three, 254 pounds, 32 and a half inch arms, uh, a one four eight 40 yard dash. That's 97th percentile for edge rushers since 2000 of the combine. Uh, a one five, four, 10 yard split is 92nd, uh, 97th percentile, uh, at the NFL combine. He ran the 20 yard shuttle in 4.25 seconds. That's 84th percentile, uh, amongst edge rushers, at the NFL combine and had a 10 foot eight. Standing broad jump, that is uh, 95th percentile uh, for edge rushers to come through the NFL Combine. So very, 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 very explosive player. A lot of bend off the edge, a lot of twitch. Uh, 254 pounds, respectable size. He himself alluded to his hands. Sorry, I have a new, if you're watching on YouTube, I have a, I have a new setup. And I'm still getting acclimated to my screen over here my camera over here and I realize I'm looking over here, but I'm actually talking to you guys. Uh, we have this set up for the draft. Um, the, ha the hand usage and the ability to play the run was, was the things that stood out on tape to me as the questions. And, and when I described chop Robinson, uh, when we did the flip the table and I said, you know, this is why I wouldn't flip the table. Cause I would get it. Uh, the, the, Pass rush profile is strong. You know, people will just look at the sack numbers and, and point out the lack of sack production. And I understand why that's the case. Uh, but my concerns were more with the run and being an every down player. Um, and maybe that's not the pressure that they envision him having because of Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb and Shaq Barrett. And if that's the case, okay, you know, you have a part of a defensive line rotation to stay. Uh, fresh and go get the quarterback. And and is there still a pathway to playing four to 500 snaps? Yes, I do. Uh, but I think this is a designated pass rusher for the Dolphins early in his career, just because I didn't see because of the hands and he doesn't have elite length. The ability to deconstruct blocks and play the run was a big time work in progress for me. And that's where, as I think about Chop Robinson as a player, I say, okay, you're probably going to have to go out and get like an early down guy and Chop's going to be a rotational guy and you can get all these exotics and all these these explosive killers on the field at the same time as you're ready to uh, as their health allows. And that's where I think Chop Robinson is going to be an immediate contributor. Mike McDaniel said as much. They've talked about the growth potential. Uh, I didn't really grade on growth potential. So again, that's why my assessment for Chop Robinson was not this glowing review of a player because he does have holes right now. I, I do think he's an incomplete player. Uh, they alluded directly to, when talking about the introduction to Chop Robinson, what he can develop into and what he can become, and that is what they're so excited for. But they also said simultaneously, we do feel like there was a role in this defense for him to help and contribute while reaching and growing towards his potential. So again, that, that's why I get it. And I had people stopping in the live stream. Oh, Kyle, I'm so sorry. Talking to me like my dog died. And in, in reality, I'm just kind of, eh, okay. Like, what are you going to do in that, on day two now? Like that, that's where my frame of mind is. Because if I get the complete picture of what the draft class looks like, and I like what comes beyond, and, and we'll get into that with who remains entering day two and how the board dropped behind it. I think that's very important context for me to get the right feel for this draft class. If you told me that they were going to get 
a 95th percentile explosive athlete as your, your pass rush rotation guy, I'd say, okay, like that, I'm pretty excited about that. It coming at 21, it softens the blow a little bit that none of my guys that were like non-negotiables, like don't get out of this spot and take this player were there. Are there guys that I would have liked on the board more? Yes. Am I over the moon with the pick? No. Am I devastated by the pick? No. So it's it's an incomplete, it's a to-be-determined. Now, if you go out and you get a bunch of developmental guys, and that's your entire draft class is all developmental guys, and quite frankly, you really have only have one more swing of the bat right now, I'm going to be a little leery. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be honest. This has the potential to be a draft class I walk away from underwhelmed. But it depends on what they do from here. And they do have a swing of the bat tomorrow with a position group, a series of position groups that I think fell modestly favorable for you. But you have to take advantage of that now. What I thought was interesting is in that press conference after round one, they're up here talking about how we were working the phones the back half of the round trying to get back up into the first round again. They don't have a three. I say, okay, like you, you guys have visions of sugar plums dancing in your heads, right? Like, what, what are you guys working on? Were, were they working on uh, Xavier Worthy before the Chiefs traded up with the Bills and got him at 28? Was that Mike McDaniel's toy that they were trying to go up and, and get him? Were they, tr I can't imagine they were trying to go up and get either Tyler Guyton or, or uh, Graham Barton. Maybe they're working on a player that's still on the board. I'd be fascinated to see that. But I will say, uh, you need to help your offense a little bit. Your offensive personnel needs a juice, needs a jolt. There's players that are here that I'm looking at, and I think you're, you're going to have a pretty good crack at, at adding to your offensive personnel with, again, a player who can play meaningful snaps for you. But right now, the, the big thing that looms over our head is we have one more opportunity to make a, a meaningful investment in this draft. And this is a player who plays a premium position, has an explosive athletic profile, all the things that the Dolphins have historically told us that they are as an organization, what they covet with these picks. They did all that with this pick. So, like, I'm not surprised they went with the four, their fourth edge. Or maybe he was higher than their fourth edge. I don't know. I would say he probably has a ceiling comparable to a number of these guys, but the floor right now is not as high. And that's the, not the vibe I was hoping for. They seem to think that there is a role and it's on passing downs. Okay. Your edge rush group, group got ran through last year with injuries. This is the second year in a row. It was corner the year before we are committed to not having the same group bite us in the rear end that did the year before it was corner in 2022 and it was edge in 2023. Great. What else are you going to do? And that's where this conversation goes, and that's where my attention goes. I'm fired up for what Chop Robinson can be. I'm not fired up for what he is, but I also wasn't fired up about how the board fell despite a great start for the draft for the Dolphins. So that's the full frame of mind that I came into with that pick at 21. We will... Uh, talk a little bit more about who remains up next here on this episode of Locked On Dolphins as we get ready for day two of the 2024 NFL Draft. Coming your way, make sure you stick with us. I have been informed accurately, by the way, from my friends. I have quite the competitive streak going, and uh, my competitive streak gets its it scratched quite a bit thanks to Monopoly Go. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities and bringing you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends. Not only can you charge them rent on your iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly, but you can also heist their vaults for riches for yourself. And the leaderboards show the biggest Monopoly tycoons and in a given point, but it's not just about your competitive side. You can also team up with your friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download MonopolyGo.com. Download Monopoly Go for now, free in the App Store or Google Play. 
GeekopolyGo.com. Geek, tell me it's 106 a.m. and you have haven't been in front of a camera for five hours without telling me it's 106 a.m. and you've been in front of a camera for five hours. <laughs> um the way the board fell. I do have three meaningful players. Significantly graded players, like first round grade players, based off of their fit for the Dolphins. But they all fell because of medical tags. This is why we put the tags on the players. That's why I don't change the grades for a medical. You just say, look, this is what the player grades as. But this is a, the concern that exists with the player that potentially could lead to this player falling in the draft. That's Johnny Newton, defensive tackle, Illinois. Cooper DeGene, corner, defensive back, Iowa, and Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from North Carolina State. Um, most surprised with Cooper DeGene. I, I think that the medicals are bad enough for Peyton Wilson. I, I don't expect him to go in the second round either. Uh, Johnny Newton, uh, I did not expect to go on night one just because the medicals with the Jones fracture in his foot sounds like it's a big enough concern, long-term concern for teams that it, it might be a re recurring issue. Uh, that I'm not surprised that he slid. DeGene's the one that surprised me a little bit. I thought for sure like the Packers would go, and they they drafted Jordan Morgan from Arizona, the offensive lineman, uh, who's a bit of a surprise pick. Um, but here's here's the rundown that I'll give you. Every wide receiver that I give a top 10 first round or late, early two to is off the board. Remember, my top five wide receivers in this class for the Dolphins specifically with their scheme were Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. That's the order those three came off the board. Ricky Pearsall came off 31 to the 49ers, and Xavier Leggett came off 32 to the Carolina Panthers. Those were the five wide receivers that I had in my top 32 grades in the class, off in the top 32 picks. Offensive tackle, uh, we're just about cleared out through the second round grades at offensive tackle. Uh, that was Joe Olt, Troy Fatanu, Talise Fuaga, Olu Fashanu, JC Latham, Amarius Mims, Tyler Guyton, Jordan Morgan. Those were all players that I had top 10 first or second round grades on. They're all off the board, except for Roger Rosengarten from Washington. The right tackle is the only offensive tackle that I have left with a first or second round grade. Uh, your interior offensive line, here's where you can get excited. I have four interior offensive linemen with second round grades that are still on the board. Only one off of guys that don't have tackle flexibility. It was uh, Talise Fuaga, uh, what I had as graded higher as a guard because I wanted him to be reflected on where I thought his value was highest, uh, but for other teams as a tackle. So Talise Fuaga is off. Graham Barton came off after Miami picked at 21. But you still have Zach Frazier, Jackson Powers Johnson, Christian Haynes, and Cooper Beebe. You got four second-round players left. That's in comparison to uh, one offensive tackle. That's in comparison to four wide receivers, two of which have flags, Adonai Mitchell with the uh, – Character questions, the the diabetes that he was diagnosed with, and and the management of that is a concern for some teams. And then Jermaine Burton, who has some character concerns, has been in what like six schools in eight years or whatever it is. Uh, there's some questions there. Lab McConkey and Roman Wilson are also in the second round bucket. So you have some wide receivers left. You have the most of any position in the draft. You have the most players left with second-round grades and interior offensive line. Interior defensive line, um, Michael Hall, Johnny Newton. Newton's one of the ones with a first-round grade. There's only three first-round grades left for me. Uh, Brandon Dorless also kind of in that stratosphere. A bunch of corners. Let's hope we don't go there. <laughs> and then safeties, Cooper DeGene, uh, Javon Bullard, and Kidano Ladapo are, are first or second-round grades. Uh, Dejean is a first with a medical flag. Bullard is a early two, and then Oladapo is a straight up two. So Miami picks again in it's pick thirty three. 
I'll do the math here, about 22 picks. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 players with second round grades, not including cornerback and linebacker as positions that and running back that I think are positions that aren't necessarily of need. So Miami's going to have a chance. Um, they're mathematically guaranteed to get a crack at a second round player on my board. And that's skewed and, and graded specifically for the Dolphins. What are you going to do? You know, help and get a guy. Do you still have guys that you were trying to get in the first round for that you have coveted that highly that you want to go get? Is that Jackson Powers Johnson? Is that Christian Haynes? Is that Lab McConkey? Is is that uh, Cooper DeGene? Is that Johnny Newton? Like I, I think what happens tomorrow will set a lot of the tone of my vibe coming out of this draft class. I'm okay with what happened tonight. I don't love what happened tonight, and I'm not ticked off about what what happened tonight. I want to sim to Miami on the board of 55 because I want to have more information. So I hope you approach this class with the same school of thought. There was a lot of knee-jerk reactions, and it was, oh, they didn't pick Graham Bartman. can't believe it. Uh, they didn't trade up for Troy Fatano. I can't believe it. It sounds like it's at least the vibe they put out, and I would expect anything different, right? Because they, they just picked Chop Robinson. Uh, they made it sound like this, this was kind of guy they had soft circle for this pick, and that the values that they were getting to move out of their spot weren't good values to lose out on a player that they had circled. So um, I'm just a little bit lower on Chop Robinson than, than the Dolphins clearly are uh, because of the year one anticipated role that I foresee for him. Uh, but he's a member of the team, and, and I'm not going to sit here and have so much of an ego about what my personal opinion is that I'm going to root against the player. Right? I hope Chop Robinson's the best edge of the class. <laughs> that would be outstanding. And I'll take the L and I'll be wrong. I'd rather be wrong than the player be successful. So that's going to do it for uh, this episode of Locked on Dolphins, reacting to night one. Not a great board break after a great start for Miami. Uh, would have loved for them to find a little bit more draft capital if they were going to pick Chop Robinson. They clearly disagreed. And um, this is a, a toolsy, explosive player who profiles well as a pass rusher in spite of a lack of sack production. And Miami is committed to the thing that helped do this defense in down the stretch, not to be the thing that does them it again. Okay, I respect that. Took who you thought your was your best available edge. I got the position right. I didn't get the player right, but I also had the player that I had them take. It was Jared Verse in my final mock, and he was off the board by the time they picked. I'm excited to see what comes tomorrow. And I'll have a lot more clarity on what my feelings are for this draft class, even though there's two days left of drafting yet to be done. Uh, the first and second and third round picks is, is kind of where you have the opportunity to to really move the needle for anticipated contributors. Chop Robinson will be a contributor for this football team and will be a contributor in 2024. How big the role is, maybe not as big as I wanted or hoped, had hoped for, but he is here and we will see what else this draft class brings. I'm Kyle Krabs. Keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day. I appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. And we'll be back on the YouTube channel for the day two live stream with Joe Marino. You can find us there. Fins up.